Yo, what's up guys, Patrick here, welcome back. Moving on to another symmetry example dealing with a factored polynomial. So we got this crazy function here, got to figure out is it even, odd, or neither, meaning we've got to figure out do any of these expressions hold here. Now this, uh, this function here is pretty complex, but we're going to follow the exact same steps that we did before. So we got to find an expression for f of negative x and then an expression for negative f of x and then see if any of those equalities hold there. Now something that I didn't mention in the previous examples that we did, just because I didn't have to mention it, now I do, is personally what I like to do is I first like to make sure that every factor that I'm given is fully factored. Because if you don't fully factor, what's going to happen is that comparison process between f of negative x and f of x and negative f of x is just going to be tougher to see. It's going to be tougher to compare those functions and a lot of times you might miss out on these equalities. So a function may be even and you might say it's neither because the functions don't look the same, but really if you were to factor and simplify a little further, they would be the same. So here's what I mean by that. What you want to do is before we get into getting f of negative x and negative f of x, I'm actually going to try to simplify this a little further. And notice there's a lot of opportunities to simplify because if we go through each factor, so x squared plus 4, we can't simplify that any further. Right, that can't factor. If this was x squared minus 4, that would be able to factor to x minus 2, x plus 2. But notice here this 2x minus 2. Notice how we can take out a 2 from that factor. Right? It would still all be within that bracket that's being to the, uh, taken to the power of 2. But nevertheless, we could factor out a 2 there. The 2x plus 3 can't factor that any further. So that would be squared. Now this bracket here, this 2x squared minus x minus 3, that actually can factor further. So this here, if you use decomposition on this, you would end up getting 2x minus 3 and then x uh, plus 1. This factors into that. And so you actually want to use this instead. So what I'm going to do is in that bracket, I'm going to put 2x minus 3, x plus 1, all that's going to get squared like that. Right? So I'm just simplifying these two factors here. I'm factoring them further. And so what that's going to allow us to do is make that comparison process, as I mentioned, a little easier after. Okay? So what you want to do here is notice this is multiplying, this is multiplying. So this goes to the power 2, this goes to the power 2. So if we rewrite this, we got negative 4x squared plus 4. Uh, this 2 goes to the power 2, so that would be 4. And then the x minus 1 goes to the power 2. We got this 2x plus 3 squared. And then we'd have 2x minus 3 squared, x plus 1 squared like that. And then this 4 and this 4 can multiply. So let me, uh, I'm going to rewrite the function here. Okay, so we haven't done anything with f of negative x yet or negative fx. I'm just taking the function and rewriting it in a different format so that comparison process is better. So 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. Then we got x squared plus 4. And then we got x minus 1 squared. Uh, I'll put the x plus 1 squared together. It doesn't matter which order they're in, but they're kind of similar. So I'll put them together, and then these two are kind of similar. So I'll put those together. You don't have to do this, but like that. Uh, and let me make sure everything's all good. Yeah. Okay, so what I did was took this function rewrote into that format. And now notice that we got every factor and every factor is fully factored. Right? So there's nothing else here that we can do to simplify the function more, to factor it anymore. But 
what I'm going to do now is use this function instead of this function. They're both the same function. It's just I'm going to be using this one now for f of negative x and negative f of x. So f of negative x, plug in negative x for all the x values. So we'd have negative 16, negative x squared plus 4. Then we'd have negative x uh, minus 1. That gets squared. Negative x plus 1. That gets squared. 2 negative x plus 3, that gets squared, you know what? And then over here, I'm just going to write this as negative 2x, no brackets. And then uh, same thing here. I'll just put negative x minus 1. This one has to be in brackets because it's going to an exponent. But these x's are all by themselves, so I'm just going to write it like this. I'm going to erase this. Negative uh, 2x minus 3. Square. So you got to be careful with your steps here with your algebra. Check each step. So we're all good here. And now what you want to do is what we did in the previous video. So this negative x squared, that would just become x squared plus 4. What you want to do is you want to make each leading coefficient positive. So we're going to factor out a negative one here. That's going to go or actually we're just working with this bracket, so this would end up being x plus one. That's gonna be squared. I'm gonna factor out a negative one here. It's gonna become x minus one. That's gonna be squared. I'm gonna factor out a negative one here. That's gonna be two x minus three. All right, basically all the signs are changing when you factor out that negative one. And then I'm gonna factor out a negative one here, two x plus three. And that's gonna be squared. And now, These two are multiplying, so both would go to that exponent. Right, so a lot of steps here. But this is how you fully show the work if you were to get full marks on this on a test. So I don't know how picky your teacher is or how many steps they allow you to skip. But I personally recommend not skipping too many steps because you might make a mistake as well. Not only will you maybe not get full marks if you do get it right, but you increase your chances of making a mistake as well. Right, so ends up being this here. So notice these negative one squares, they're all just gonna be positive ones. So we can kind of just forget about all these. Right, now if they were negative one to an odd exponent, that would end up being negative one. We would have to keep it there and then we would bring that to the front. This would end up being a positive 16 unless there were multiple negative ones, then you'd gotta see whether you end up with a positive or negative. But um, if you have negative one to an even exponent, you can pretty much just forget about them. They're all just ones. And so what we end up getting, actually, I'll write it up here. So f of negative x, what's it gonna end up being? Negative 16 x squared plus four we got the x plus one squared, got the x minus one squared, we got the two x minus three squared, and then the two x plus three squared. Like that. And then, uh, and then yeah, that's the simplified expression for f of negative x. And notice, f of negative x, it's actually the same as f of x. So just from here, we can tell that the function is going to be even. But just to complete the process, what's negative f of x gonna be? Well, we would just multiply this function by negative one, so that 16 would turn into a positive 16. So it has the same factors, but it's not the same function as f of negative x because instead of negative 16, we got this positive 16. Okay, so notice in this case that f of negative x equals f of x. All of the factors are the same. They're just switched around. This and this, this and that, this and this, this and that. Right, so a unique example where you wanna make sure that each factor is factored first in the function. Rewrite the function, then go through the process. Because if we didn't do that, if you try to do this process on this function, it would be hard to compare things, okay? Like you could try it, 
you'd have negative x here, negative x there, negative x here, negative x there. You, it would be hard to compare the factors. You could try it and then you could see, right? You'd have to factor further after. So my suggestion is that you factor the original function as much as it could be factored first, get it into that format, and then do the process and then see whether any of those equalities hold.